Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian here at the Halifax International Security Forum in Nova Scotia, Canada, one of the world's leading gatherings of military, security, political, economic, and civil society leaders. And we have with us Svobomir Debsky, who is uh, with the Polish Institute of International Studies in, in Warsaw. Svobomir, thanks very much for joining us. You know, last year when we spoke, Donald Trump had just been elected president, and there were a lot of concerns in the international community, particularly among NATO allies, about how a new president that was perceived as critical of NATO and also uh, pro-Russian, uh, what that would mean. It's been a year. What are some Polish views, not only of the American president, but also of the security uh, situation as it stands right now? Well, um, I would say that after the year, the uh, situation um, uh, from one point of view improved, from the other deteriorated. From the point of view of, of improving, um, we had a very uh, clear statement from the pr new president of the United States, Donald Trump, about um, his commitment uh, towards NATO. Um, um, it was a very good uh, summit um, uh, with Donald Trump in, in Brussels. Then he went to Warsaw, to my, uh, my city, to deliver, I think, uh, um, the best, uh, his best foreign policy speech um, to the, uh, um, until now. Um, about you know his vision of of um, the alliance, his vision of of the West. We may we, we may not necessarily agree with all points, but the way how it was presented, his you know um, he subscribed to the tradition of U.S. presidents coming to Warsaw, delivering important speeches about. Uh, where we are, where we are going. So uh, it was important for, for uh, NATO community, for the Transatlantic Alliance. Um, of course, um, after, after the Warsaw Summit, which was also uh, uh, very much, uh, um, you know, contributed very much to the, to, to the you know, security situation, we have a, a right response to the uh, Russians' aggressiveness, to the Russian aggression on Ukraine, to the treating of, of uh, NATO member countries, not only Baltic states, but also Denmark. Um, a Russian ambassador um, was, was heard treating Denmark of nuclear strike. So uh, uh, sending um, troops to the Baltic states sent a very good, pol very good strong uh, signal to, to the Russians that we are not going to tolerate this kind of behavior. How is Russian behavior? Uh, Poland shares a border, particularly with the Kalin Kaliningrad. Uh, talk to us about what the situation is like. We just had the Zapad exercise. Uh, we've spoken to folks in the Baltic as well as in uh, Norway who um, you know, have perceptions of it that or not positive, uh, you know, from a, a Lithuanian perspective, it was a dress rehearsal from a, for an invasion of a Baltic country. Talk to us a little bit about what Pol how Russia has been doing in the past year that are both either reassuring uh, Warsaw or worrying Warsaw. You know, uh, neighboring with Russia, it is not a new thing for us. <laughs> so uh, we have we have had some experience with uh, with Russians' uh, behavior, and uh, I would like to remind you and and uh, your viewers that in 2009, um, uh, Russia had um, another Zapad exercise um, um, during which um, they tested nuclear strike against Warsaw. Uh, but you know, uh, it was however it was after after war in Georgia. But then the West put on the table the reset button, sending a very wrong message uh, uh, to to the Kremlin that actually uh, we can close our eyes on uh, misbehavior of, of of the Russians. We can forget about uh, what they did in in Georgia. And actually, in that way, we encourage Russian to uh, to to do it again against Ukraine, grabbing the territory. Uh, treating um, other uh, nations with nuclear strikes. So um, um, now the situation is, is different in that sense that we all in in uh, transatlantic alliance know that they move too far, that uh, they restore to the to the not only threat of use of force but actually they did it. They uh, um, uh, went against Ukraine, they grabbed the territory, they occupied uh, part of, of Ukrainian territory, and now we have all problems uh, connected with them. So to stop the Russians, to send the signal that we are not going to tolerate this kind of the, of the policies, um, we enhanced our uh, posture at the eastern flank of NATO, we enhanced our uh, uh, communication uh, inside the alliance, and we spent more on defense, which is very important um, because it, it makes uh, the whole alliance more credible. 
do you think that what NATO is doing with the enhanced forward presence, the battle groups, obviously one is what an American one is in uh, Poland, there is a Canadian one in Latvia, and elsewhere uh, in the region where there's a lot of capability, Italians and Spaniards are also engaged, with it, which is good because they're from a part Absolutely. of Europe that is, doesn't really see that situation and can report home how serious the concerns are. Um, is that sufficient a deterrent so far? And at what point will Poland seriously consider the forward deployment, for example, of more significant arms, I mean, even nuclear arms. You know, at some point, there is that discussion that the only way to deter the Russians from continuously talking about nuclear capability is by, is by doing that. Talk to us a little bit about what some of the thinking in Warsaw is for that. Uh, I think that we need more um, because we, uh, 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 we, we should uh, to uh, consolidate our, first our thinking, then our uh, uh, policy. So we need a more permanent uh, stationing of, of NATO troops on the soil of, of the Baltic uh, states and other countries of uh, eastern flank. And there is a reason um, uh, uh, for that, because actually what Russia wanted to, to have is to create the world when uh, the post-Soviet space is a unique Russian sphere of influence. So they are not, uh, no, uh, they should not be independent states like Ukraine or Belarus or Georgia. Then they need to create, they want to create a kind of the gray zone of, uh, uh, of the countries of the NATO eastern flank. So no American troops there, no facilities, no significant, uh, significant uh, um, infrastructure. And then they need to create a kind of the concept of powers uh, system of communication uh, between the United States, Germany, maybe China and, and uh, th themselves. So it is a very 19th century concept. If we want to prevent it, it is not uh, uh, enough uh, to uh, condemn it by words. We should condemn it by deeds. So to prevent a kind of the gray zone a Russia, the Russians want, we need to have a permanent stationing of troops. We need to have uh, the credible uh, potential to respond if they escalate. Um, so, of course, you know, if we are talking about nuclear posture, uh, it is a part of uh, NATO's policy, but it is a, a policy of all the alliance. So Poland and other countries of, of the eastern flank uh, uh, would, be happy, uh, would be happy to contribute to, this, to the shaping this, this policy. But we are not, uh, uh, you know, uh, we, are, we, we cannot preempt the decision of, of, of uh, alliance and uh, we would follow the decision of, of uh, our all allies. So that if there was a decision, a alliance-wide decision to deploy nuclear forces to Poland, Poland would consider that as something that would be key to alliance security. Absolutely. That's, uh, that's our thinking. That's our contribution to the strategic thinking of the alliance. We know our neighbors, as I said, for quite time. And uh, we know that the world is not enough. And, and would that be popular with the Polish people? I believe so. I be, you know, Polish people are, uh, you know, um, 90 percent uh, transatlantic and they are uh, very much in favor of uh, enhancing of, of transatlantic bonds and, and, and alliance. They are very pro-American, very pro-Canadian, very pro-NATO pro uh, oriented uh, uh, people. So uh, definitely we want to uh, be um, not only constructive but important player in, in shaping NATO defense posture. And when, let me ask you one brief question before we have to go up into the next session. Um, there are some folks who are alarmed at some of the right-wing demonstrations, particularly National Day, had a huge turnout of, of the Polish right. Uh, talk to us about what's going on and what's driving this, this movement, the expansion of a movement that some even Polish Americans with strong roots and connections still to Poland are very concerned about this shift in this anti-democratic shift that they see from the government. Uh, thank, you. thank you for this question because uh, there is a lot of exaggeration in that. Okay. Uh, um, there are, uh, I read in articles, uh, uh, you know, uh, binding together Charlottesville and, 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 and Warsaw demonstration. And there is a, uh, if I can explain that there is a huge difference in one sentence. Um, uh, I would like to turn your attention to the, to the fact that the President of the United States had the trouble to condemn uh, Russia's um, anti-Semitic uh, um, demonstration in his own country. But the Polish leadership, including a government, prime minister, uh, president uh, and even Kaczynski, they all went public and condemned this kind of, uh, of policies, this kind of behavior, this kind of slogans. Um, they, they are very strongly against ethnic nationalism and they said it. So actually, to be fair, 
um, we have to realize that there are two different uh, reactions. And we should rather embrace and, and be happy that um, uh, these people are um, as good liberal democrats as, uh, as others. And however we may have uh, uh, issues with the, with the you know, policy they pursued, but they are in the same camps as, as the others. Svolomir, dziękuję bardzo. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much and uh, uh, all the best to your um, uh, viewers.